The Horns of a Dilemma. Aragon was speechless. Disbeliefs roared through his mind as he tried to reject Murtag's words. The Forsworn never had any children, least of our Morzen. Morzen, the man who betrayed the riders to Galbatorix and remained the king's favorite servant for the rest of his life, could it be true? Saphira's own shock reached him a second later. She crashed through trees and brush as she barreled from the river to his side, Fang's bare tail raised threateningly. Be ready for anything, she warned. He may be able to use magic. You are his heir? asked Aragon, surreptitiously reaching for Zarak. What could he want with me? Is he really working for the king? I didn't choose this cried Murtag, anguish twisting his face. He ripped at his clothes with a desperate air, tearing off his tunic and shirt to bare his torso. Look, he pleaded and turned his back to Aragon. Unsure, Aragon leaned forward, straining his eyes in the darkness. There, against Murtag's tanned and muscled skin, was a knotted white scar that stretched from his right shoulder to his left hip, a testament to some terrible agony. See that? demanded Murtag bitterly. He talked quickly now, as if relieved to finally have his secret revealed to someone. I was only three when I got it. During one of the many drunken rages, Morzan threw his sword at me as I ran by. My back was laid open by the very sword you now carry, the only thing I expected to receive as inheritance until Brom stole it from my father's corpse. I was lucky, I suppose. There was a healer nearby who kept me from dying. You must understand, I don't love the Empire or the King. I have no allegiance to them, nor do I mean you harm. His pleas were almost frantic. Aragon uneasily lifted his hand from Zarok's pom pommel. Then your father, he said in a faltering voice, was killed by... Yes, Brom, said Murtag. He pulled his tunic back on with a detached air. A horn rang out behind them, prompting Aragon to cry, Come, run with me! Murtag shook the horse's reins and forced them into a tired trot, eyes fixed straight ahead, while Arya bounced limply in Snowfire's saddle. Saphira stayed by Aragon's side, easily keeping pace with her long legs. You could walk unhindered in the riverbed. He said as she was forced to smash through a dense branch of dense web of branches. I'll not leave you with him. Aragon was glad of her protection. Morzan's son, he said between strides. Your tale is hard to believe. How do I know you aren't lying? Why would I lie? You could be Morzan interrupted him quickly. I can't prove anything to you now. Keep your doubts until we reach the Varden. They'll recognize me quickly enough. I must know, pressed Aragon. Did you serve the Empire? No, and if I did, what would I accomplish by traveling with you? If I were trying to capture or kill you, I would have left you in prison. Murtag stumbled as he jumped over a fallen log. You could be leading the Urgles to the Varden. Then, said Murtag shortly, why am I still with you? I know where the Varden are now. What reason would I have for delivering myself to them? If I were going to attack them, I'd turn around and join the Urgles. Maybe you're an assassin, stated Aragon flatly. Maybe. You can't really know, can you? Sephira, Aragon asked simply. Her tail swished over his head. If he wanted to harm you, he could have done it long ago. A branch whipped Aragon's neck, causing a line of blood to appear on his skin. The waterfall was growing louder. I want you to watch Murtag closely when we get to the Varden. He may do something foolish, and I don't want him killed by accident. I'll do my best, she said as she shouldered her way between two trees, scraping off scabs, slabs of bark. 
The horn sounded behind them again. Aragorn glanced over his shoulder, expecting Urgles to rush out of the darkness. The waterfall throbbed dully ahead of them, drowning out the sounds of the night. The forest ended, and Murtag pulled the horses to a stop. They were in a pebble beach directly to the left of the mouth of the Beartooth River. The deep lake Costa Merena filled the valley, blocking their way. The water gleamed with flickering starlight. The mountain walls res restricted passage around Costa Merena to a thin strip of shore on either side of the lake, both no more than a few steps wide. At the lake's far end, a broad sheet of water tumbled down a black cliff into boiling mounds of froth. Do we go to the falls? asked Murtag tightly. Yes, Aragorn took the lead and picked his way along the lake's left side. The pebbles underfoot were damp and slime-covered. There was barely enough room for Saphira between the sheer valley wall and the lake. She had to walk with two feet in the water. They were halfway to the waterfall when Murtag warned, Urgles. Aragorn twisted around, rocks spraying from under his heel by the shore of Costa Merena, where they had been only minutes before. Merna. Hulking figures streamed out of the forest, the Urgles massed before the lake. One of them gestured at Saphira, guttural words drifted over the water. Immediately, the horde split and started around both sides of the lake, leaving Aragon and Murtag without an escape route. The narrow shore forced the Hulky Cull to march in single file. Run, barked Murtag, drawing his sword and slapping the horses on their flanks. Saphira took off without warning and wheeled back towards the Urgles. No, cried Aragon, shouting with his mind. Come back! But she continued heedless to his pleas. With an agonizing effort, he tore his gaze from her and plunged forward, wrenching Zarok from its sheath. Saphira dived at the Urgles, bellowing fiercely. They tried to scatter, but were trapped against the mountainside. She caught a coal between her talons and carried the screaming creature aloft, tearing at him with her fangs. The silent body crashed into the lake a moment later, an arm and a leg missing. The coal continued around Costa Merna, undeterred. With smoke streaming from her nostrils, Saphira dived at them again. She twisted and rolled as a cloud of black arrows shot towards her. Most of the darts glanced off her scaled sides, leaving no more than bruises, but she roared as the rest pierced her wings. Aragon's arms twinged with sympathetic pain. He had to restrain himself from rushing to her defense. Fear flooded his veins as he saw the line of Urgles closing in on them. He tried to run faster, but his muscles were too tired, the rocks too slippery. Then, with a loud splash, Saphira plunged into Costa Merna. She submerged completely, sending ripples across the lake. The Ur Urgles nervously eyed the dark water lapping at their feet. One growled something indecipherable and jabbed the spear at the lake. The water exploded as Saphira's head shot out of the depths. Her jaws closed on the spear, breaking it like a twig as she tore it out of the coal's hands with a vicious twist. Before she could seize the Urgul himself, his companions thrust at, their, with her, at her with their spears, bloodying her nose. Saphira jerked back and hissed angrily, beating the water with her tail. Keeping his spear pointed at her, the league Cole tried to edge past, but halted when she snapped at his legs, but halted when she snapped at his legs. The string of Urgles was forced to stop as she held them at bay. Meanwhile, the Cole on the other side of the lake still hurried towards the falls. I've trapped them, she told Aragon tersely, but hurry, I cannot hold them long. Archers on the shore were already taking aim at her. Aragon concentrated on going faster, but a rock gave under his boot and he pitched forward. Murtag's strong arm kept him on his feet, and clasping each other's forearms, they urged the horses forward with shouts. They were almost to the waterfall. The noise was overwhelming, like an avalanche. A white wall of water gushed down the cliff, pounding the rocks below with a fury that sent mist flying through the air to run down their faces. Four yards from the thunderous curtain, the beach widened, giving them room to maneuver. Sophira roared as an ergo spear grazed her haunch, then retreated underwater. With her withdrawal, the 
Cole rushed forward with long strides. They were now only a few hundred feet away. What do we do now? Murtag commanded, demanded coldly. I don't know, let me think, cried Aragon, searching Arya's memories for her final instructions. He scanned the ground until he found a rock the size of an apple, grabbed it, then pounded on the cliff next to the falls, shouting, I varden abordur shur tugalar gantavanta, gantavanta. Nothing happened. He tried again, shouting louder than before, but only succeeded in bruising his hand. He turned in despair to Murtag. We're trapped. His words were cut off as Saphir leapt out of the lake, dousing them with icy water. She landed on the beach and crouched, ready to fight. The horses backpedaled wildly, trying to bolt. Aragon reached out with his mind to steady them. Behind you! cried Saphira. He turned and glimpsed the lead Urgle rushing at him, heavy spear raised. Up close, a cull was as tall as a small giant with legs and arms as thick as tree trunks. Murtag drew back his arm and threw his sword with incredible speed. The long weapon, long weapon revolved once, then struck the coal point first in the chest with a dull crunch. The huge ergol toppled to the ground with a strangled gurgle. Before another coal could attack, Murtag dashed forward and yanked his sword out of the body. Aragon raised his palm, shouting, Jerda Thierra Kafis! Sharp cracks resonated, resounded off the cliff. Twenty of the charging ergols fell into Costa Merna, howling and clutching their legs where shards of bone protruded. Without breaking stride, the rest of the ergols advanced over the fallen companions. Aragon struggled against his weariness, putting a hand on Saphira for support. A flight of arrows impossible to see in the darkness brushed past them and clattered against the cliff. Aragon and Murtag ducked, covering their heads. With a small growl, Arag Saphira jumped over them so that her armored sh sides shielded them and the horses. A chorus of clinks sounded as a second volley of arrows bounced off her scales. What now? shouted Murtag. There was still no opening in the cliff. We can't stay here. Aragon heard Saphira snarl as an arrow caught the edge of her wing, tearing the thin membrane. He looked around wildly, trying to understand why Arya's instructions had not worked. I don't know. This is where we're supposed to be. Why don't you ask the elf to make sure? demanded Murtag. He dropped his sword, snatched his bow from Tornak's saddlebags, and with a swift no motion loosed an arrow from between the spikes on Sphere's back. A moment later, an ergol toppled into the water. Now she's barely alive. How's she going to find the energy to say anything? I don't know, shouted Murtag, but you'd better think of something because we can't starve off of, stave off an entire army. Aragon, growled Saphira urgently. What? We're on the wrong side of the lake. I've seen Arya's memories through you, and I just realized this isn't the right place. She touched her head against her breast as another flight of arrows sped towards them. Her tail flicked in pain as they struck her. I can't keep this up. They're tearing me to pieces. Aragon slammed Zarak back into its sh sheath and exclaimed, The Varden are on the other side of the lake. We have to go through the waterfall. He noted with dread that the Urgles across Costa Merna were almost to the falls. Murtag's eyes shot toward the violent delu deluge blocking their way. We'll never get the horses through there, even if they can even if we can hold our own footing. I'll convince them to follow us, snapped Aragon, and Sophira can carry Arya. The Urgles' cries and bellows made Snowfire snort angrily. The elf lolled on his back, oblivious to the danger. Murtag shrugged. It's better than being hacked to death. He swiftly cut Arya loose from Snowfire's saddle, and Aragon caught the elf as she slid to the ground. I'm ready, said Saphira, rising into a half crouch. The approaching Urgles hesitated, unsure of her int intentions. Now! 
cried Aragorn. He and Murtag heaved Arya onto Saphira and then secured her legs in the saddle straps. The second they were finished, Saphira swept her wings and soared over the lake. The Urgles behind her howled as they saw her escaping. Arrows clattered off her belly. The coal on the other shore redoubled their paces so as to attain the waterfall before she landed. Aragorn reached out with his mind to force himself into the frightened thoughts of the horses. Using the ancient language, he told them that unless they swam through the waterfall, they would be killed and eaten by Urgles. Though they did not understand everything he said, the meaning of his words were unmistakable. Snowfire and Tornak tossed their heads, then dashed to the thundering downpour, whinnying as it struck their backs. They floundered, struggling to stay above water. Murtag sheathed his sword and jumped after them. His head disappeared under a froth of bubbles before he bobbed up, sputtering. The Urgles were right behind Aragorn. He could hear their feet crunching on the gravel. With a fierce war cry, he left, af left after Murtag, closing his eyes a second before the cold water pummeled him. The tremendous weight of the waterfall slammed down on his shoulders with breakneck force. The water's mindless roar filled his ears. He was driven to the bottom where his knees gouged the rocky lake bed. He kicked off with all his strength and shot partway out of the water. Before he could take a gulp of air, the cascade rammed him back underwater. All he could see was a white blur as foam billowed around him. He frantically tried to surface and relive and relieve his burning lungs, but he only rose a few feet before the deluge halted his ascent. He panicked, thrashing his arms and legs, fighting the water. Weighed down by Zarak and his drenched clothes, he sank back to the lake bed, unable to speak the ancient words that could save him. Suddenly, a strong hand grasped the back of his tunic and dragged him through the water. His rescuer sliced through the lake with quick, short strokes. Aragorn hoped it was Murtag, not an Urgle. They surfaced and stumbled onto a pebble beach. Aragorn was trembling violently, his entire body shivered in bursts. Sounds of combat erupted to his right, and he whirled towards them, expecting an Urgle attack. The monsters on the opposite shore, where he had stood only moments before, fell beneath a withering hail of arrows from crevices that pockmarked the cliff. Scores of Urgles already floated belly up in the water, riddled with shafts. The ones on Aragon's shore were similarly engaged. Neither group could retreat from their exposed position for positions, for rows of warriors had somehow appeared behind them, where the lake met the mountainsides. All that prevented the nearest call from rushing Aragon. All that prevented the nearest call from rushing Aragon was the steady stream of arrows. Unseen archers seemed determined to keep the Ergols at bay. A gruff voice next to Aragon said, "Ach, Guntras Dorza." What were they thinking? You could have drowned. Aragon jerked with surprise. It was not Murtag standing by him, but a diminutive man no taller than his elbow. The dwarf was busy wringing water out of his long braided beard. His chest was stocky, and he wore a chain, a chain metal jacket cut off at the shoulders to reveal muscular arms. A war axe hung from a wide leather belt strapped around his waist. An iron-bound oxhide cap bearing the symbol of a hammer surrounded by twelve stars sat firmly on his head. Even with the cap, he barely topped four feet. He looked longingly at the fighting and said, Barzil, but I wish I could join them. A dwarf? Aragon drew Zarak and looked for Saphira and Murtag. Two twelve-foot-thick stone doors had opened in the cliff, revealing a broad tunnel nearly thirty feet tall that burrowed its way into the mysterious depths of the mountain. A line of flameless lamps lit the passageway with the pale sapphire light that spilled out onto the lake. Saphira and Murtag stood before the tunnel, surrounded by a grim mixture of men and dwarves. At Murtag's elbow was a bald, beardless man dressed in purple and gold robes. He was taller than all the other humans, and he was holding a dagger to Murtag's throat. Aragorn reached for his power, but the robed men said in a sharp, dangerous voice, 
Stop. If you use magic, I'll kill your lovely friend here, who was so kind as to mention you're a rider. Don't think I don't know what you're, that you're drawing upon it. You can't hide anything from me. Aragon tried to speak, but the man snarled and pressed the dagger harder against Murtag's throat. None of that. If you say or do anything I don't tell you to do, he will die. Now, everyone inside. He backed into the tunnel, pulling Murtag with him and keeping his eyes on Aragon. Saphira, what do I do? Aragon asked quickly as the men and dwarves followed Murtag's captor, leading the horses along with them. Go with them, she counseled, and hope that we live. She entered the tunnel herself, eliciting nervous glances from those around her. Reluctantly, Aragon followed her, aware that the warrior's eyes were upon him. His west rescuer, the dwarf, walked alongside him with a hand on the haft of his war axe. Utterly exhausted, Aragon sa staggered into the mountain. The stone dwarves doors swung shut behind them with only a whisper of sound. He looked back and saw a seamless wall where the opening had been. They were trapped inside. But were they any safer?